Medical Daily and Time Magazine are reporting on the issue of stress, which is basically a silent killer in America. They say the following, quote, stress can wreak havoc on the body in ways we might not expect. More than 40% of Americans recognize they have this problem, but admit they are not doing enough to manage their stress levels. The consequences of neglecting the body's signal signs of stress could lead to all kinds of health problems, including panic attacks, high blood pressure, and in increased risk of type 2 diabetes, as well as erectile dysfunction, low libido, and loss of self-control. Time reported more than 40% of adults have been so stressed that they yelled at their partner, presumably for no reason, whereas 18% of people have snapped at a co-worker. While everyone has different triggers for stress, they can agree work is their biggest source of stress on a daily basis. From experiencing poor management to working long hours and possibly facing discrimination or harassment, Chronic stress is more often than not the root cause of an employee's unhappiness. So they go on to uh, list what the CDC recommends in order to fight stress or lower your stress levels. Some of the things they say include avoiding drugs and alcohol, which is interesting, uh, finding support and connecting socially, I get that's file that under just being a human. <laughs> Prioritizing healthy diet and exercise, that's very important. Sleep, also very important. And they say a daily walk. So, uh, yeah, some of that is good. I disagree with the CDC on uh, avoid, avoid drugs and alcohol. You know, you're stressed all week at work, and then you get off of work on Friday. Definitely don't have a few drinks. Definitely don't smoke some weed. That could lead to a problem. Okay, Dad. Thank you. Uh, enough from the peanut gallery on that one. I'm a big advocate of moderate use. And by the way, according to Dr. Carl Hart, who's an expert on this, he says 80 to 90 percent of all people who use drugs, broadly speaking, drugs across the board, are moderate users. So I would actually say the opposite of what the CDC says about that. I'd say if you're going to use in moderation, use away. You need to de-stress, especially on the weekend, given the fact that you're busting your ass about five days a week. But here's the thing, and this is why we're discussing this. I think they missed the biggest point. Work! They just said it. In fact, I'll quote it to you again. Time reported that 40% of adults have been so stressed that they yelled at their partner. I'm sorry, I missed it. Where is it? Come on, baby. There, there it is. While everyone has different triggers for stress, they can agree work is their biggest source of stress on a daily basis. So the article tells you, yeah, the root problem is work. You're overstressed because of work. And then in the solutions, they don't put working less? That makes absolutely no sense. Thing number one on the list should be work less. Now, it's so easy for somebody like me to just say, ah, work less, and that's the end of the conversation. No, no, no. But I'm, I'm not presenting it in that way. What I'm trying to say is we need a, a social movement. We need Americans to all stand up and fight for this politically, where we say, we're, no lo we're not debating with you anymore, Congress. You are our representatives. So when we tell you we now want, by law, at least six weeks paid vacation, we mean it. When we say we want maternity leave and paternity leave, we mean it. When we say we want sick days, by law, we mean it. We're not playing anymore, man. The United States is... Uh, one of very few modern industrial nations that does not have paid days off by law. In fact, when it comes to maternity leave, it's only us in Papua New Guinea that don't offer some kind of paid leave. So we're lagging behind the rest of the industrialized world. And that's just the beginning of the conversation, to be clear. The policy proposal of six weeks paid vacation. That's just the start of the conversation. Because in reality, what would I like to see? Well, I actually agree with uh, who is, I think it was uh, William Howard Taft, who said in the New York Times in uh, about 1910, he wrote an op-ed, or he was quoted in the New York Times, and he said he thinks, remember, conservative Republican, he said, I think every uh, working person should get three months off every year. Okay, now that's, that's more like it. That actually makes sense because you're a human being. 
you're not only as valuable as your cost on the marketplace. You're not just a cog in a machine. You're a human being with different passions and desires and needs and wants, and you should be able to fulfill all these different things, not just, you know, a, a dollar value economically on the marketplace when you rent out your labor. So I agree with that, or that's more in the ballpark of what I agree with, but furthermore, I also agree with a four-day work week. Now, today, I know that sounds radical, that sounds insane, that sounds crazy, but it wasn't that long ago, again, in the early 1900s, there was a discussion and a debate in America about whether or not we would transition to a four-day work week. And the reason why people argued that and said, well, this is going to be the future, is that they realized, well, see, now we're getting to the point where we have machines. And what's the point of making the machines if the machines aren't going to take over for us, but we still you know, get paid even though the machines are doing most of the work and then we can live our lives in other ways that we deem fitting and we deem appropriate. So the idea was because of industrialization, because of technology, because we're creating all these different machines, the machines can do the work, we can work significantly less, and we can still get paid and live fantastic lives. But at some point along the way, we started getting exploited. We were exploited by the owner class, let's call them, the elite, the multinational corporations, and the billionaires. I mean, we're talking about a, a group that's set up a system by buying politicians and rigging the laws. They've made it so that, for example, from 1980 and onward, your productivity has gone through the roof, but your wages are flat. And guess who's reaping the benefits? They're taking all that money and putting it right in their pockets. So the problem is... You're overstressed, you're overworked, you're undersexed, and you're angry, and you're pissed off about it. And there was another study that came out this week that said that if, you, if you're overworked, which virtually everybody in America is, your uh, chances of a stroke go up 35%. So I'm not just talking about this for shits and giggles, guys. I'm talking about it because your health is on the line and your happiness is on the line. And if we can acknowledge the problem, we can recognize the problem as they partly do in this article where they say, well, we, work is the main cause of stress. Well, then let's create a better system. We can have a system where we work four days a week. We can have a system where we get a couple months off uh, paid by law every year and the sky's not going to fucking fall. So uh, we need to realign our priorities and get to a place where we can have a system that fosters human happiness better because it certainly ain't working the way we're doing it right now.